Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we are going to go over how to create a leather book. We have already gone over a lot of the Arnold AI standard shaders, and we've created them procedurally. But this time we are going to go over how to create textures so that we can create unique assets. All right, so the first thing we always want to do is take a look at references. So I already found some references and I'm going to share with you. There's all types of leather books. And what I really want to do is create a decorative one. So to really show an example of what Arnold can do, I want to create something with leather, but also have a golden decoration to it. So something like this, where it's very decorative, it's got different materials going on. We've got leather, we've got this gold, which is going to be really interesting. And of course, it's always nice to look at beating up books because uh, that would be really cool to make. So we're going to make something new, like a new book. There's, this one's cool. All right, so now that we have reference, I also have downloaded some textures from textures.com. Textures.com has a lot of really great textures. I use leather, I can find new leather, red leather, black leather, whatever you like. So there's a lot of really fantastic textures to use from. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is already UV mapped. So this is gonna be very helpful. By the way, you can download this file at academicphoenixplus.com under downloads. Feel free to follow along. And while you're at it, you might as well sign up for my newsletter. Uh, if you sign up for my newsletter, you can get uh, pre-release content. When I do workshops and things like that online, I will be sending you invites. So by all means, please go ahead and sign up for my newsletter, academicphoenixplus.com. Okay, now for the advertising, let's go ahead and uh, move forward with the book. So this is already set up. The only thing we need to do is export this into Photoshop image, UV snapshot, and automatically, if you set your project already, it should automatically put it under images. So, all right, so UV snapshot, we're gonna click on browse. It automatically places it in images, which is perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and call this leather, leather book underscore UV snap. I'm gonna go ahead and choose a 1024. You can always do more. Let's go ahead and change this into a TIFF and try that. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring my TIFF in here. There we go. I'm gonna double click and call this UV snap. Change this into screen. And I'm, but now what we need to do next is bring in our texture. Now you're more than welcome to use any type of texture you want. I'm gonna grab this red one. I'm gonna make a selection, the one with the least amount of highlights. Go ahead and copy that and paste. Lucky for me, this is a good size. So I'm rotating it and placing it. If it's too small, so for example, if your image comes in like this and you grab it and stretch it, you're gonna get bad textures because you're taking small pixels and stretching them out and you're gonna see a lot of mistakes. So you wanna make sure that you don't uh, do that. So this is in screen, which means that I will see right through it, which is exactly what I want. I'm gonna change and lock this so I don't accidentally make mistakes. So let's duplicate this, Control J, and move this to the side. I'm gonna turn this off really quickly and I can see that there's a little bit of a, a seam and I wanna avoid that. There's several ways I can do to get rid of that. What you can do is Control E, the spot healing brush tool and it's going to do the best that it can but uh, you may still get a little bit of that weird pulling so you might need to healing brush tool instead of spot healing so it's kind of like the stamp tool or the clone you click out here I'm going to make a bigger brush and then you kind of paint the texture in and it will try to find the difference so stamp and then paint so that's helping transition and you don't get such a blurry mess go back to the spot healing brush and just kind of get rid of some of these little things that makes it stand out a little bit okay cool all right we're gonna focus specifically on this area but why don't let's go ahead and give this area right here make it look like at least a color of paper so let's give it a little bit of an orange yellowish whitish color let's go ahead and fill give one more layer pick a red and then just fill it there we go okay so I'm going to call this background. This is going to be the leather. This is the paper. And I'm going to save as, and this is going to be my leather book CLR for color. Let's go ahead and change this to a PSD. I want to keep, well, it's got an alpha map. i got to save that. i got to get rid of that. Channels, go to alpha, delete that. So now that's nice and clear, save. And let's see what it looks like in Maya. We're gonna assign a new material. Let's grab our favorite Arnold Standard Shader. And this is gonna be our leather book. So again, I like to call it leather book underscore AI standard. 
crank up the weight to one and under color this is the base weight is one color let's plug it in file folder gave me an error something went wrong so we'll see what happens it's under images and let's grab this one something here says no object matches that you can see that it's not connected to anything anymore so let's take a look at that and you can see that there is no connection so let's go to the hypershade I know that I imported the material so the textures right here so I can just drag the file into color all right press the number six and there we go we've got something it's really sparkly right now, so we're going to have to take care of that. But uh, right now, it looks like it's working. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the weight of specularity to zero, because I'm right now just going to be focusing on color, and then I'm going to focus on specularity, which is what's going to give me the gold. OK, so let's give it a little decor. Let's go back into Photoshop, bring this back up. And I already have some decorations. So I have like decor number three. I'm going to grab that, Control A. Control C, Control V, Control T. You got that? It's Control A is for select all, Control C is copy, Control V is paste, Control T is transform. So I'm going to make this. Something like that. So this is going to be the gold. So I'm going to put here decor. And it's up to you what type of text you want to put in here. But uh, hmm, let me think about it. How about, shoop, I can't even see it, texturing, but let's change the color to black for now until we change it to, uh, to an actual gold color. And let's pick a pretty, since it's so decorative, we might as well go ahead and pick something like this, which is a little frilly, but that should work. Texturing, duplicate this, control J. I'm going to say, uh, whoops, academic phoenix plus dot com. I like these little red pink things now. They like try to help you align. Like you are really not aligned. That's what they're trying to tell you. <laughs> Let me help you. If you really suck at this, it's like, okay, sure. Thanks. Okay. Um, we can always grab a ruler, control R bring this out you can always try to put it in the middle here and then just kind of snap it there sometimes the center is right here so sometimes that's how I make sure things are centered you see the little circle right there usually that's in the middle so I try to uh, make sure that everything's somewhat aligned okay you can always grab it and remove it all right We'll see. We can always change this. It's not set in stone. Um, all right, let's grab this. Reload. All right. Oops, UVs. We have a base. Now we need to figure out how to make the gold. So the gold is a particular color. The great about gold and base and metallic values is that there's specularity when the wavelengths come in. It absorbs all the wavelengths except for this yellow and it brings it back out. And that's the specularity color. So we can use that to create gold. So right here under solidangle.com, they already have the values that we need to create gold. So this is an RGB. So we're going to be using this value to make gold trim in our leather book. So let's take a look. The first one's two, I can't, let's see. Let's see, 201 and 88. So I'm going to go over here, go back into Photoshop, double click. I'm going to use color overlay. Click on this little guy right here. And I already forgot my values because I have terrible short-term memory. Let me see, where is it? Uh, all right, 201 and 88. 201 and 88. 201 and 88. OK. It looks a little yellow right now, but once we have everything set up, it's going to look very similar to gold. I'm going to hold on Alt and just drag the effect to the text that I've already created and turn off the UVs, save. And let's go back into Maya and see what it looks like. Reload. All right, so there we go. We have leather with gold. There's several things we need to talk about. Let's go ahead and talk about specularity next. So specularity is 
going to be very different when it comes to the leather versus the gold trim. The leather is going to reflect white light versus the gold is going to reflect yellow light. So we have to control our specularity based on that. So let's select this and increase our weight to one. And we can kind of take a look at it and there's our specularity, which is nuts. So our roughness is not enough. So let's go ahead and increase our roughness. Now, lighting. Lighting is going to be very important because specularity is the result of how light affects the object. Let's make something that it can reflect. So we're gonna create a plane. I always like to create a basic plane. And we're gonna be using Arnold dome lighting, which is gonna give us reflections and photoreal lighting. So let's go to Arnold lights and sky dome. Right off the bat, we can take a look at what it looks like now. And it is way blown out but we're getting results. Now, the issue is, is that this is so uniform that we can't really see how the specularity is reacting with it. So we need something with more detail. I'm gonna stop that. So I'm gonna go look for a HDR image. Let's go to color, click on the little color, go to file, go to the little folder, and you will find the image under source images. And I have this, go ahead and plug that in. Let's see what that looks like. Press play. All right, so sometimes Arnold does this and it's really weird, but we can fix it. The thing about HDR is that it takes every single pixel and emits light out of it. Sometimes it compresses it with using color space RGB. If you convert that into a raw, so let's go to raw and then there it goes just like that. So you just have to change the color space to raw. Now that we have this, we can actually texture using this. All right, neat. Now it may look like it's reflecting gold, but this is just white light interacting with it. All right, something like that. So you can see that if this was leather, it would have a lot more information and it all this would definitely reflect more gold. All right, I think that's a good place to stop. That was the first part of creating a color map. The next video is going to be about creating the other maps such as specularity, metalness, and also butt map. So keep an eye out for that. In the meanwhile, remember that you can always sign up for my newsletter at academicphoenixplus.com and you can also get pre-release contents and all sorts of a bunch of goodies and freed models actually at academicphoenixplus.com. So thank you again for listening. I really appreciate it and I will see you next time.